So we're going to have a steel beam from here onto a post, vertical post. Got the rest of that ceiling taken out up to that joist. Oh, all ordered. Nice. End of the week towards the cleaning next week though. Monday morning? Monday. Been a while. It's currently the half eight and the fourteenth of August. And the last time this man was in work was twenty second of July. Yeah. So it's been a while. So the band's back together. New job today. Which is This is now a bit, this is part of the job. This window is coming out to be formed French doors. So obviously the meat has got to go. There was plans to have an extension, but they were scrapped in favor of what we've got to do now. This door, which is a downstairs toilet under the stairs, very nifty. It's having a new lintel. Lifted up higher so we've got to get a bigger door in. This door here, which as you can see is an angle. Um, this wall is coming out to here. So that's coming out, that's coming out. So we're gonna have a steel beam from here onto a post, a vertical post, goes across to this side here. So we're gonna form that with a steel. That's coming out. So you're just gonna have a steel across the top here and one be opening just to open this all up. So we've got the big steel in with the post, padstone in this wall, which is uh, I think it's about 250, just a flat padstone straight onto the wall. Then <clears throat> once this is all gone, we're gonna have another steel across here. Now what we're going to do today is expose everything, get as much as we can done. We're not propping anything up today, but we're going to try and get some floorboards up because there's a pad stone going on the existing wall down there. And we're going to get a measurement for our vertical post. So we need our steel height up there and we need our the below floorboard there so we can get our, our vertical measurement. And what we're going to do is we're going to screw it and can fix it into the original wall with threaded bar and a couple going that way into that wall. Um, that's pretty much it isn't it? So today is, is just getting excavation really and um, like take the rad off, um, strip everything down, get our measurements and get over to James. So he, he's got the measurements to fabricate everything then and then it's, we're going to pause here Till the steel's ready, and then once the steel's ready, we're back. Uh, skip coming. And we're gonna, we've got to work top. Alex is always happy when he's got something to pull his stuff, even though the family is still in, so they might want that for lunch. <laughs> they might want to use that for lunch. My dude will have to lunch in, in all the dust. No, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. So, um, yeah, that's it. This is the back of the house here. This is like a little. Two story, uh, what would you call that? It's not an extension, it's part of the original house. So it's quite a big footprint. So, there you go. That's Just thinking Alex, this has got to be two steels. Yeah. I think so. It depends what's above. We'll find out, won't we, soon? Yeah. Because it's in... Oh, no, it's not. It's inside that. Yeah. It's original, so there shouldn't be two walls there. I'm thinking it's, if it's an extension, there'd be two walls. But it's original building, so there should just be one wall above. But that's what we're here today to find out. It'll open everything up and check everything. Because, um, obviously, structural, structural engineers have to make assumptions. So it's on our drawing to 
make sure check everything that is assumed before we go ahead make sure everything's correct so timber floor so we're going to have to take the floor up to prop through unless we unless we can find a joist to prop off which will be on a sleeper wall underneath so um, I'm sure I can cut all this waffle down so um, let's start taking things apart Quick update, Alex has whipped the frame out, all the architraves off. Came out pretty easy, didn't it? It did, yeah. It's the old stuff you see where they build, used to build pads in and nail them up. So everything's nailed. We've saved the long lengths of arc for this door in case they want to use it for this. Because the door's going higher, they'll be able to use this architrave to match on there. So we've saved that. Yeah, it's just struggling to get the skirting board off in one piece but I don't think we need to we need to save a part of that for the reveals on the door patching that and patching here so we'll probably just cut it just before the door and um, rads off giving you to take a radiator off as a temporary measure just close the two valves down put your therm thermostat onto zero and just close that one down and it, that's it stops the water lift your rad off Tip the water up and put it out outside. So um, once all the timber works off, we're going to strip all the plaster off. Might just uh, strip this door back, leave the door in because it's a toilet door, and um, get the laser out and work out our heights where we're going to put the padstone in and cut out the padstone. This is a semi-detached, so it'll go. It's just going in the one skin, so this this steel will sit on there 100 mil into that wall with the pads still going that way not bad progress so far so we can get on with this now this this lead cable it's lead and I think they've had a rewire judging by the uh, trunking so if we can cut this off we will if not it's going to be right in the way and that's it there's a pad stone to go in there too for this steel, we just need to find this angle. If we can find this angle, we can get the we can get uh, plates welded, plates fabricated, so we can bolt it rather than welding it. So let's get the rest of this timber off. Go and have a sandwich.
That uh, wasn't held together by much. That bond it is, obviously, <laughs> but um, yeah, that was not hard to do at all. But there you go as well. That's the amount. That's the plaster bit come off. I think that bit's been left on the 425 there. Now yeah, put it back here. I think we're going to get that prop now with an acro since there's a side just gone. <laughs> but there we go. We're making progress at least. So I'll get you set back up somewhere and we'll keep going. Right, I'll give you a quick update. We fell straight back into tradition, Dad's left me. <laughs> but he's going to grab some sand cement and the pad stone so we can get that set today. Because since we're going to be drilling holes and all that into it later on, it's best that we get this set now so we've got plenty of sand to go off. But um, I'll stick you around here. So, got the rest of that ceiling taken out up to that joist. Just because, uh, Asked me to. <laughs> I think it's so we can. So now we know where the joists are going, they're going that way. And so my job now is tidy up. And I've made a little hole with the multi tool so far. And I don't know if he wants me to go any bigger, so I'm just going to leave it at this for now. If he wants me to go bigger, I can do that, no problem, because here's the joist. And I think he said something about me taking some bricks out down to the. Uh, down to here, like, I think about to here, I think he said, or something. I can't remember, but I know he asked me to take some bricks out, so I'll get all this mess tidied up first so we've got some room to navigate. I don't miss this dust. <laughs> oh, this time three weeks ago, I was probably just sat on a uh, peace and quiet Swedish balcony. <laughs> I'll come back here when we're. Uh, Looking a bit cleaner, so I'll catch you in a bit. He's returned. I'm trying to work this thing out. <laughs> I've got a new toy to try and figure out. It's, it's like 40 quid for a digital one, so I've got this thing and it's, uh, it's rubbish. It's Good, nine, nine quid. You could um, slice your Domino's pizza with it. Yeah, that's probably what it's fit for. <coughs> but while he was gone, this is what I got done. Now, obviously, 
What's the problem here? <laughs> this is in the way, but hopefully we can probably still get the pad stone popped underneath. We're gonna have a we're gonna have a proper look at this in a minute once I've cleared this part out. And then uh, we're just gonna get the coven taken off there and get the rest of it tidied up because obviously since I've been making some making some vibrations, the, uh, there's a bit more crap to clean up. But then we'll be off to JM to get all the steels ordered and then that'll be us here until the steel is ready because obviously we don't want to make too much of a mess and have acros all over the place while we're going to be gone for a few days because this is access to the kitchen we don't want to make it a bloody obstacle course for them so just the one acro there keep that lintel up and then once we're back we'll be de demolishing, propping, stealing all the works so, I will... Don't know where Dad's gone, I was gonna say I'll hand you to Dad. Uh, I'll, I'll catch you in a bit. So this is uh, in the past, Steve. Because we're off today, Friday, we thought we'd um, make our pads down. So this is our job. You've, you will have seen all this, but there's the post. That's going to be our post across onto a pad stone on the uh, party wall and then this is going to be across on an angle and we're going to have this section welded unless we can get a good measurement off it. So um, what we're doing today is we're going to make this pad stone for post, sorry P3 is the pad stone so come down to P3. We need a 327 by 100 by 215 deep concrete pad stone set onto the existing subfloor below the post so we've got to knock the wall down down to below the floor level and then we, we bed our pad stone onto the existing floor which obviously has a foundation underneath it and then our post sits on top so our post is 100 by 100 and it's going to have a shoe on it uh, 300 by 100 by 15 thick base plate and then we have to bolt that down into the pad stone which we're going to make now so we're just going to knock a box up and we're going to make it 120 wide, a bit wider, because we're going to be drilling into it. We're going to make it slightly wider. And we're just going to use some old spot boards for the um, for the sides. Mix our own concrete and we usually use a um, hammer drill um, just to consolidate the concrete so it's absolutely solid, no uh, bubbles in it. So let's get this thing knocked up. So we've got 327 by 100 by 215 deep concrete pad stone. So yeah, let's get cracking. There we go, that is a template. Pretty nice looking one too. It's not a template, it's a mould. Mould. For pad stone. Because there's a big steel post going in in this job, it needs a, a bigger pad stone. And instead of driving all the way up to Leyland, 
and make one. We've got some grit sand materials we can still use, so... Stone there, cement, so... I might just, um, no, I might just run a bit of cork in the gap, just so we don't lose any... That's it, that's going to be a pad stone when it's, when it's made, that way. I was going to make the, the mould with two sides and the top. But, like I said, that's just easy, it's easy to get the concrete, it's easy to tamp it. And then, like I say, we'll get the... Um, SDS on the side. That's not working, but so the hammer consolidates it. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So we best go pick up some sand and a mother. Yeah. yeah. Catch you in a bit. Got up. We just had to nip out for a bit, so we're back. So here, this is our pad stone. Three thirty by two thirty by 120 I think the depth we made it a little bit wider because we're going to be drilling into it I don't want it blowing so it's on its side at the moment so when it's in situ when it's on the job it's going to be sat that way we're going to have a plate this big probably two holes in it and then the 100 by 100 post is going to sit at this end and go up the wall so this is just to spread the weight of the post down onto the foundation of the house we're not digging down, putting a concrete pad in because we don't need to because the wall's below. Because we're removing the wall in the house, this is going to be all wall and it's coming out. So this post is going to take the weight of the steel, which is going to go above the top. So I'm going to rustle the mix up now in a, in a gorilla tub. We've got stone, we've got sand and we've got cement. So um, I'm going to whip that up now. I'm going to get it into here. And then as I said before about it being vibrated, I'll do that as well, show you what we do there. The reason why we vibrate it is to make sure the concrete is completely dense, there's no air in it. Air bubbles in concrete makes weaker concrete. So um, I'll get the ingredients together and we'll get this mixed up. Okay, since... Um, I'll probably make this as a full video of how to make a pad stone. So, this is our gorilla tub, which I'm going to mix in, which is a, the red gorilla tub, bought from the shop at DJ Projects. Still going strong. Shout out to Dave and Stevie there at DJ and the rest of the gang. This is our measuring pot. Can be any, doesn't matter what you use, it can be any size as long as you measure it equally. And concrete usually is four, two, one, which is four, four of your stone, two of your sand, and one cement. So I'm going to do that four to one, but then as I mix it, I'm probably going to put another half of cement in it just to give it that extra bit of strength. With it being pad stone, I want it to be quite strong. We don't just want normal concrete, we want very dense, very strong concrete. So maybe put an extra full, full, full um, cement in. So what I'm going to do is, before I put it in the tub, is I'm going to put it into the mould first and then I, I'm not mixing too much and I'm making sure I'm mixing enough as well. So first, let's put our stone in. Let's start with this. So that's one. Two. Three. Four. So it's looking like we're going to have to go for eight. Five. Six. Six and a bit. Excuse me, the bag of stones over here. So that's six and a bit. Four. 
got seven. Eight. There we go. So, so four, two, one. So this is our four. Because we've so four, two, one. So this is eight. So it'll be eight, four, two. So one. Four. I think we might need a little bit more actually. So that's eight, four. Now we need two cement. Got, after a bit of tidying up, got the cement, which is here. So one of them. Yeah, and a two. These are quite heaped up, so they're bigger than the others. And I'm going to stick another half in. I want these pad stones to be strong. And the other two pad stones we'll be using on the job will be um, six by four concrete lintels, which I think are actually brilliant for pad stones because they're. They're more dense than the pad stones and they're reinforced. Um, let me just get, oh no, I'll show you later. I'll come back to that but show you the uh, other one. They'll, they'll be cut down to size. So there's our eight, four, two, and a little bit. So it's, it's quite heaped over. So hopefully, when it's mixed, it doesn't go down, it doesn't reduce too much because I want to make sure this is full and leveled. leveled. And that's the other thing about when you buy pad stones, they're in a mould and the mould's always chamfered. So when you're trying to put a steel on top of the tip pad stone, it never sits flat. It always sits on a bit of an angle, which is right pain in the arse. When we worked for A&E, they, they used to get their pad stones on the table saw and cut a flat surface onto the top, which is a good idea, but we don't always have them. So into the tub. without spilling it. Oh, that's heavy. One mould. <laughs> a lot of daylight coming through that bit. Might have to put a bit of cork in there. We're going to need a lot of water out there. Yeah, we've got a tube of old cork over there, so we'll just seal that up with that. So there's our mould, put that to one side. I feel like I'm on Blue Peter. Right. Let's... So, these gorilla tubs are brilliant, they're just... Rummaging around like that. We mix them the cement the same. Always mix, same as baking, always mix all your dry stuff together first. So it's completely mixed before you start anything wet to it. Although we won't put any eggs in this. We'll still make sure all the dry ingredients are, are mixed thoroughly through. So much easier. There you go. You see the bottom of the tub now, so all the cement's off the bottom. So I think we'll stop and do a bit of time lapse now. All oh, this could be a very long video. Right, let's just 
fill up this um, tank cox. The, the uh, carpenter would be horrified to see that. You fit the bus through there. <laughs> so, let's get a bit of cork in there because you don't want the water. We don't want all the water running out because we need the water to be in the concrete to cure the concrete. Right, hopefully that should do it. It's ready for the concrete to go in now, so I'll get all this goop off my fingers. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> okay, I'm back. I've got a feeling that, as, as concrete always does, it reduces once you wet it. Let's find my gloves. <clears throat> so, let's get this in and see how far it gets us. Not very, I'm thinking. Okay. Bottoms up. Say we're about 40 mil from the top. So if that's 120, that's three quarters full. So we need another quarter. So That was picked up on the time lapse then, but that's perfect. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to level up the cube, which as you can see is way out of level. Get it level. And that's not so bad that way, which is I thought we'd do the way out. But I'm going to get it all together, get the breaker, and get get it on round the sides, and give it a good pounding with the breaker to get all the air bubbles out of it. So because um, it's going to be noisy, I'll put this bit back on time lapse this bit. That was concrete was slightly above the edge of the um, the mould before. If you look now, I have been at it for over half an hour with the hammer and the breaker and stuff, bringing the air out of it because the air causes weakness. Yeah. I'm going to leave the water on the top because that'll help it cure, having a bit of water on. So it's going to sit in here for three days now. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, could be even longer actually. It could be Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe even Thursday before we get the steels. So it's got plenty of time to cure. Yeah. So... Um, Oh yeah, anyone want a window? 1200 by 1200 single leaf opener with a sill, just needs cleaning up. Make us an offer, you can have it. Nothing wrong with it, came out of the house last, that we did the last job on. But it was in good condition so we didn't skip that. Uh, the sill is knocking about somewhere. Anyway, that's it. This is a full video of a pad stone, it's also part of a video of um, the steel's job. So I'm going to tie it up in here and I'm going to go in and probably do some editing like I usually do. So it's half seven. So tidy up and get in. So see you next one. Obviously you can speed this up a little bit. You, you know what to do. Okay.
You're as excited as I am, aren't you? Mm-hmm. You're excited to see this. Mm-hmm. I'm just for some minutes trying to get the air out of it. Yeah? Yeah. I regret filming this now. There's a pad stone. First try, no mistakes, no. I like it. Um. Put it on the windowsill, put it on its edge, let it dry. So, for the most part, that's it, for today at least, because Dad has nipped off to JM now to go get the measurements sent off because I think they close soon, it's like quarter past three now, so we'll see, but here it is from this side, so we've got our measurements for that one, that one and that one, and as you can see we just took the plaster off there as well, it's just a stud wall, so there we go, not much else to say. So. Next time we're back here, we will have have a lot more to do. <laughs> we'll be demolishing, we'll be getting acros up, propping the joists. Oh. Oh, hello. Oh. All ordered. Nice. End of the week towards the beginning of next week, though. Good job we got it in now. Yeah, and we've got all the jobs we can do now. Hopefully a garage can be in the end. Matt's wall, 17th and 18th is booked in. Matt's wall? Yeah, in blood. That's been booked in for months. So. And I'm almost tidied up here. I've just got some last bit to do and then we'll... I'm just going to get the hoover up there. ...give everything a big blowout. But yeah, so for the most part we will, in terms of this one, we will see you next tomorrow? week. <laughs> yeah, for, for this we'll see you tomorrow, but we'll see you in a few days' time. Yeah.